everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The second lesson is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Amen. Because sometimes we don't remember things that happen in worship. 
worship. And you can always go and watch it once again on YouTube. You can even see yourself out there. It's kind of cool. So I want to give you an acronym, which means every letter in that word is going to stand for something. And if you can remember it, maybe it will help you repent. So let's call up the next screen now. This is too dark. Oh, gee whiz, look at that. That's unfortunate that the background is too, too dark. Because I don't know if you can make that out. But I'll tell you what it is. And you can always go back later on the internet, like I said. R stands for recognize. That means we are called to recognize, to know what it is that we're doing wrong. To see that, to know that, to recognize we have done some things we shouldn't do. The E, as we go down the list, maybe you can see a little better. E says N. N means we want to put an end to what we're doing. We want to stop that. We want it to hit our heart in such a way that we say, I don't want to do that anymore. That isn't what the one who loves me wants. I want to end that. Then we go to the letter P, which means pray. We should always be people who pray. About all the good things we receive, but also that God would guide us. Then, here's a big word, you guys. The next letter, E, is earnest. Anybody know what earnest means? Earnest means we mean it. We really want this. Our heart gets changed to the point where we desire what God has have for us. We want to be earnest about it, and that N means now. This is the time. Don't say, oh, I'll do it in a couple of months, I'll do it in a year, I'll get around to that someday. Now is the moment. God desires us to change and to come into His presence now, and then as that happens, T means thanks. Always give thanks that it's not only up to us, that God will help us, that God has power available to us, guidance, all of those good things. So that's pretty hard to see up there on the screen. My apologies in the background is kind of so dark. Purple is a good Latin color, but it doesn't show up so well there. I don't pray on the computer. But I hope that you'll make go back and you can check out that word once again and you can remember. Repent means recognize, end, pray, earnest, now, thanks. Yeah? Yeah. End, end it now. I will be in the now. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's pray about it. Would you pray with me? Let's ask that God would help us to repent in this way. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day to be able to be here in your presence. To hear your word and your promises, and even the promise that we can repent, turn back to you, and find guidance and help to live as you would ask us to live. Help us with that, God. We don't know how to do it so well. We need your presence now and always through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining me up here, guys. That was a big one. That was a tough one. Go back and watch it again sometime on the internet. That will help you, I hope. All right. I invite you to go back to your seats and brothers and sisters. I invite you to rise with me. Let's join in our gospel affirmation. I will exalt you. I Jesus out into the wilderness 
He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited upon him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I always test the kids when they come to the front and give them objects and things that they uh, have to answer some questions around. So, I'm going to test your eyesight here, which might be a bit of a tough one, and some of you are excused because I know you've just come through some eye, eye situations. Well, all right, so all of you out there, can you tell what I have here? Pretty tough. Anybody? It's a nail. The needle's close, but it's a little nail. Should have maybe tried to get a real big one, right? Um, nails. Do you know how many types of nails there are in the world? Anybody? Some of you construction type people, some of you uh, carpenter type people could probably tell me. Uh, I'll give you some homework. You don't have to do this, it won't be a test, but when you go home, Google it. Google types of nails and see what comes up. It's amazing. There are horseshoe nails. I, I did a little research on this. Upholstery nails, concrete nails, siding nails, drywall nails, shingle nails, roofing nails, masonry nails, round headed, oval headed, plastic headed, cap, carpet, corrugated. Pretty fun to say. They come galvanized, they come coated, painted. I wouldn't go on that, right? Not sure. You, you get the idea. Incredible. The number of nails they are. It's a remarkable human invention. They're fasteners, right? They're, they're, they're to hold things together. And, and there's power. There's power in a nail because of that. If you don't believe me, as Lutherans, many of you come uh, from various stages of Lutheran understanding, you should know that last year we celebrated 500 years since Martin Luther took a nail and pounded it into a church door so that his document could be read. Because of that little nail, the church was reformed, reshaped, refocused onto the gospel that we are saved solely by what Jesus Christ has done. By no power or ability of our own can we come to salvation. It is what Jesus Christ has done and that we receive as a gift. Martin Luther started all of that. Well, he didn't start it, but he kind of reminded us through a nail. And if you're particularly gifted with nails, you might be able to pound together a bunch of wood and you could create a bookshelf. And that bookshelf could become a doorway to knowledge and wisdom and understanding, to adventure and excitement and escape and all those good things. Or maybe you could use it to hold your Bible. And hopefully, every now and then you'd take that Bible out and you would open it and read and you would encounter power, and promise, and a love. A love that took on flesh in the Son of God, a carpenter by trade, who proved and sealed that love using nails. You see it every Sunday that you come here in Lent, you will see before you a symbol, the nail. Now maybe you're kind of going, like, what are you talking about, Pastor? Nails. There, there was no nails referenced at all in our gospel. It never, never talked about nails at all. But I think the nails loom large in our gospel reading today and into the season of Lent. Because we hear how Jesus entered into this water and as he came up there was this confirmation of the Trinitarian reality, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that Jesus the Son was unified with the Father. And the very first thing that happens after this fresh beginning, this wondrous moment, is he is driven into the wilderness to face temptation. And the Gospel of Mark doesn't give us a lot of detail about that. It simply says that he encountered Satan, the accuser, the one who wants to create doubt, but the one who wants to say, you don't have to do it that way, do you? What about this shortcut, hey? You go way back to the garden, 
What about that tree over there? Wouldn't it be nice instead of walking closely with God to just go eat that fruit and suddenly you're like, God, come on, go for it. And with Jesus, hey, you know what awaits you, son of God? Nails. You don't want that, do you? Why don't you just take that power that the, the Father has given to you and, and just make everybody believe. Just do some hocus pocus. Just do wonders and miracles of, or raise up armies or do any of these other kind of things, right? The shortcut. Just do it. And it'll all work out just fine, I'm sure, because you're good. You're a good guy. You don't want the cruelty of the cross. You don't want the pain of those nails. Jesus faces a temptation on our behalf. He stands for 40 days. Now that's one of those numbers that biblically just means for the fullness of time, for the time that it took. How many exact days? It doesn't matter. It could be 40 exactly. We can debate that. But he withstood temptation. And he was not alone. The angels were there to help him along the way, to sustain him as was needed, to remind him that the Father was present he stood for your sake and mine. And that's part of what Lent invites us into, is to remember that almost the moment we dedicate ourselves to walking a little closer with God, almost the second we make some of that decision saying, yes, Lord, I want to draw closer to you. I want to grow in my faith. I want to become more understanding of who you've made me to be and what you want me to be. Almost that second, oppression and opposition will arise. So we got to Keep tuned in to the one who's already faced it on our behalf. There's a, I've never been there now. A couple of you maybe have traveled to the Holy Land. I hope someday to be able to go there and, and to be able to tour around. But what I've read, and, and some of you have traveled, maybe you can tell me later on if this is true or not. If you were to go to Jericho and you get up into some of the heights of that city, there's a place called the Temptation Cafe. What a great name. Eh? Go in there and be tempted by all their goodies and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, but apparently, this is, again, I don't have this as, as fact, this is only what I've read, that if you get out on the patio or kind of in that cafe, you can look, and on one side you see Jericho, this oasis, this, this greenery, and this lushness, and there's orchards, and almonds, and figs, and dates, and pomegranates, and all these wonderful good things growing there, and it just looks wonderful, and if you turn and look the other way, there's the desert, the Judean wilderness, barren, rock, dry, dead, dangerous. What a juxtaposition, what a, what, a, what a balancing of two realities in a sense. And as Jesus faces temptation, those two things are before him, right? And the one looks so good, it looks so peaceful, it looks so right, right? You take what you want and it's all there for you. The other way is hard. Jesus takes the hard way because he knows that in that will come salvation. And uh, that's kind of given to us as well as we move into Lent. I encourage you, and I, I invite you to take that on, not alone, as a community to support one another, to know that uh, throughout this season, let us pray for one another as we seek to find ways that God is calling to us as a community of faith and as individuals to grow into that season of Lent. Now, what do you think about Lent? You know, Lent is one of those disciplines that maybe is kind of diminishing a little bit in the church. We don't push so hard on it. Uh, I came across a, a wonderful little Lent. Unfortunately, I don't know. I should have been smarter with computers. My apologies. They probably aren't going to be able to read this too good. First of all, go to the next slide. I forgot to tell you that I can show you a whole bunch of nails. There you go. Uh, but the, the slide after that is too dark to read, so you're going to have to listen and maybe, again, go back onto the internet to hear this. You'll recognize the tune, but this is a little bit of sometimes too often what we think of Lent as being like. And it's a tune that you probably all will know very well. Sackcloth and ashes and songs penitential, bowing and scraping, looking reverential, ashes on foreheads, repenting of sins. These are a few of our Lenten things. Downcast expressions and copious masses, Beating of breasts and whipping of lashes. No chocolate, no fun, no drinking of gin. These are a few of our Lenten things. When the sun shines, when our hearts sing, when we're feeling glad, we simply remember our Lenten things and then we feel quite sad. what we tend to think of Lent as being, right? Yes, uh, I don't know, that's... Don't worry, I'm not, 
my day job. <laughs> but that's how we think of plants, right? We think of it, oh, I gotta, you know, I gotta heap ashes on my hand, I gotta put all and look as dour and as painful and as unpleasant as we like. But really, that isn't what plant is intended to be. It can be challenging. There can be nails along the way, and there almost certainly will be if we do it intentionally with discipline to enter into it. But it is spring cleaning. That's what the word Lent means. It's an ancient word that means spring. And I don't do spring cleaning very well. That's why I, I, I should say that's why I got married. <laughs> okay, well, I'll get it later. All right, I apologize. But spring cleaning is a very good thing. You know that. So you, you who have homes and condos. And sometimes, you know, over the course of a winter, things pile up and they get dusty and dirty and musty. And you have got to clean some things out. And Lent comes around every year as a reminder to us as a church that we got to do that. And as people of faith, we got to do that. Not just in the spring, but if we don't do it any other time of the year, Lent puts it before us saying, do these things. Reflect upon your life. Examine yourself. Look into your heart and put it before God humbly saying, Lord... What is it? What is it? You've walked faithfully with the Lord, I know, many, many years, and, and God has been faithful to you in so many ways as well. But God always has a little bit more. God always says, come a little deeper. Come with me a little closer, and let me show you something new. Let me show you and direct you into the, what you need. Let me take you away from the things that diminish your life. That's hard. It is. No question. The world isn't going to help you with that. The moment you walk out of this place, you will be bombarded by all kinds of stimulus and all kinds of invitations and all kinds of things that can look so good, but it may not be what God wants in your life. It's a little bit like this. There's a, a fairy tale about a princess who's come of age and is about to get married. Her father, the king, is back in the old days where that's kind of arranged kind of stuff. But she says, I don't want an arranged marriage. I want somebody who loves me, who is dedicated to me, who wants me. And so she said, I got an idea. I'm going to announce it. A few weeks from now, there will be a race. And every male in the kingdom is invited to come and race for my hand in marriage. And the winner of the race will get to be with me for life. And so this message went out throughout the kingdom, and you can imagine that every able-bodied man, and even those who weren't so able-bodied, uh, they were prepared for this. They were excited. They went into training, whatever they could do. The race, got to do it. And so the day of the race came, and they're all lined up, and there's just scads of them all ready at the, at the starting line. And the king comes out to, to give the go, and he says, oh, just by the way, this is such a special, momentous day. I just thought I should let you know that I have taken the majority of my kingdom's treasures, and I have placed it along the path. There's gold coins and sacks of jewels and crowns and, and, and armor and all kinds of wealth just all along the way, and it's yours. You can have it as you race. You're welcome to it. And the race began, and they all started trucking down the road. Pretty quick, they discovered it's true. Gold coins and silver and all kinds of treasure and wealth and all kinds of things. I mean, they're stuffing their pockets with it and stopping and, and picking up a big body of armor and, and trying to get that home. And all along the way, almost all of them, Stopping to grab all of this, except for one man who knew there was only one thing that he desired, and that was the bride, the one who waited at the end of the race, and he had focus, and he did not turn aside or stop for any other thing, and therefore won her at the end. There's some of that in life as well, that the one who loves us, the one who is dedicated to us, also invites us to run the race with perseverance and with faith, and to not turn aside or to get distracted by the glittering things of this world. Good though they may be, keep them in the right place before Him. And there was one nail, at least one nail, that I did not mention at the beginning of this sermon. A finishing nail. The finish nail is what you put in at the end. We run through Lent so that we will stand before the cross and we will hear our Savior declare, It is finished. It has been done for you. You do not run the race so that you can prove to God how good you are, how faithful you are, but so that you may draw near to the one who holds you in love. That you may experience how good it is to be in His presence. He has done it. He invites us now 
to draw near. May that be our purpose throughout this season of Lent. Amen. Family of God, I invite you to rise with me as we proclaim for all to hear that our God reigns. Our hymn of the day, please rise. Our God reigns.
time, I would invite the congregation to be seated once again, and now let us glorify God for the collection of our offerings. Using it wisely and properly. 
And so every gift that you have placed in our hands, grant us wisdom to know how best to use it and to care for all that you have given so that everyone might have a share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you went through the wilderness. You endured the cross. You are now risen and you live with the Father and the Spirit forever and ever. And yet you pour out your grace day by day. We need that grace, and we know of other people in situations, too, that need your grace. Send your Spirit, we pray, upon all those who we now name, either silently in our hearts or aloud before you. For everyone who struggles in any way with health, we pray your healing hand would rest upon them, providing what might be needful as you know is best. For those who are challenged by mobility and uh, find it difficult to get out, help them to remember they are not alone. And help us to be present to them in different ways too, so that they are strengthened and helped along that way. We pray for all those who suffer sometimes unspeakable and, and unfathomable tragedies, for gun violence, for division, for hatred, for intolerance, for confusion, for all these things that plague our world and our societies, we pray wisdom, patience, a listening ear, and an open heart. Help us, Father, along these ways. Send your angels to uphold us, God. Whenever the wild beasts of oppression or inner beasts of temptation assault us, remind us that we too are your beloved. Help us to live faithfully in the kingdom that you are already creating around us and help us to walk day by day with your Son, who is now and always Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. congregation, please rise for the great thanksgiving. Family of God, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, holy and Father, who lives forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. We ask that you would renew our zeal and faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. So, the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Top for all is ready. I invite the congregation to be seated.
congregation. Please rise. Now, the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, for we ask it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, family of God, I invite you to receive the benediction. It will be familiar words, though it will have a bit of a preface that we will use throughout Lent. So I invite you to receive this. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth, who has claimed us as children of light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I would invite the congregation to be seated once again. I ask if there are any announcements to be lifted up. Peter, you look like you got one. I have four tickets left for Luminous, so if you're interested in the service, today's the last day. Not everyone has a chance to travel to Hawaii, so come to the Luminos fundraiser supper because it's a Hawaiian theme. I don't know what that means. You come in your bathing suit. I'm going, we'll see. But if you'd like to be a part of it, this is the final day to purchase tickets. Uh, they are $30 a piece. Uh, it goes to support the hospital ministry. Many of you will know that the governments have made cuts and no longer support spiritual care within hospitals. Therefore, all the funding has to come from hospitals, from churches and individuals. Uh, and uh, it takes a lot to, to keep a chaplain going. So if you can support this ministry, do so with your prayers. Please also consider doing that with your financial stewardship. We have a special guest speaker next Sunday, Matthew Hedlund, who has been a missionary in Nepal and Quebec area. The Himalayas is going to come and share uh, some of the uh, things that have been happening in his life. He was with us about four or five years ago, I think it was. And he did some, he's been working on translating the Bible into Nepalese. Uh, and so I hope that you will be blessed as we hear some of his stories and how the Lord has been working in and through his life. Thank you, musicians. As always, well done, well done. We really appreciate you uh, sharing your gifts with us in this way. So the Lord bless you on, on your way as well. The rest you can read on your own. I don't have any anniversaries for this coming week, but I know that Mike Grills celebrates a birthday and Kate Langhorn will as well. So let's wish them a happy birthday.